Welcome to Let's Fly VFR and today we're going for a fly in the F4 Phantom. Thought we need a little bit of jet action for a bit of a change. We've done some gliding recently, we've done a lot of GA stuff. And this is a really worthwhile aircraft to get out and have a bit of a fly in. Be careful, don't get behind the power curve in this one. It will kill you if you get too slow in it and too close to the ground. All the weapons are actually fireable so you can actually go and have some combat with your mates. Just remember there's a combat uh, selector you have to do in the settings. You just tick a box and, uh, and then you can take all the weapons out and shoot at each other if you want to. So you can hear the particle, see the particle effects happening here with the engines up and running as we power them up into overdrive or into afterburner. And uh, we we'll get it all, get this thing all warmed up and ready for a bit of a jaunt around. Even the um, pressure uh, pressure points are uh, modelled here, pressure waves uh, within the afterburning flame, which is really great effect. Give the stick a bit of a whirl around and get everything ready, get our flaps down, and uh, have a quick check around. The, the cockpit isn't stunning, and a lot of it isn't operational, but uh, the basics that you need are ready to go. We've got a, re a rear view so that uh, when we pull a few Gs, we'll see whether we get that cloud forming above the wings when you get that low pressure area uh, when you um, do when you pull some Gs. We're trying to keep damn straight on this thing. I haven't flown much with the, the PCB in a bit, been a bit poorly of late. Get down here. Now this likes lots of speed as we're coming up to 180, 190, 200 knots. I can't believe you need to go that fast to get it off the ground, but it just does not want to unstick. So we get the gear up, we'll stay level, it does rock a little bit there on that low speed. Acceleration up, we'll upset all the local uh, residents of Adelaide. Uh, let's do a vertical climb, look at the, uh, the particle effects there, the clouds forming above the top of the wings. That's very realistic, I've been very fortunate enough in my uh, life to go flying in some jet fighters, jet trainers and even been supersonic in a Mirage 3. But I have actually seen these F-4s. Uh, back in the 80s when I was in Malaysia, the F-4s from the UUSAF, I think they were the actual, they might have been from Japan, I'm not real sure, uh, a long time back. But they come over and had a look. Boy, they're a big aeroplane. They look really big. Park next to our little Mirage 3s. <laughs> they look really minuscule. It's a big plane. It's more like an F-15 size. If you happen to have seen an F-15, they're probably somewhat similar in size. Um, the F-15 seems to sit a bit higher off the ground. I haven't been fortunate enough to climb over the um, the E model and the C model in, in Saudi Arabia when I was working there. The Americans had uh, a contract helping the Saudis with those. I was working with NATOs. Let's get a little bit of speed up. And uh, again, we'll just... You can see it's ready to give you the mist when it should. You know, you get that little bit of G happening or a bit of a roll and there's an extra bit of low pressure above the wing and it shows it to you. And you get the wing trails as well. You've got the wing tip and the, the sawtooth, I think they call it. That section in about a third of the way in from the wing there, which is extended. That just tries to stop the aircraft from stalling. It's a bit jittery when you get really low low in speed and want it to do something, so you have to be forgiving. Don't ask it to do too much when it's going slow. Here's our little bit further. The clouds look magnificent. We've got to pass through the clouds there a few times. Oh, a little bit of negative G. That is not pleasant, I've got to tell you. I've had, I've done about 6.1, 6.2 Gs in the Mirage when we're doing arrows in it, and that's crushing. So I don't know how they, they do 9 or they do 12 in the um, the air race. 12 Gs is enormous. Half of your, all your friends coming and just jumping on you at the same time. It's something like that. <laughs> Not the same. We better speed as we head down through the valleys here. And the hills are on the eastern side of Adelaide City. Out, out through towards the reservoirs. There's the particles effects again just streaming back off the wings as we come through here low level and as we pull up into vertical again oh, a little bit of G and a blackout I managed not to blackout when I flew 
And I didn't get sick either. That's normally the next question. But uh, it, it could have happened. Only inverted. And I think at this point we've probably seen enough of uh, the particle effects in this. Let's do something a little bit different and uh, go out and play on the carrier. Um, I haven't done any carrier landings in X-Plane. And that's just falling out from low speed there. We're under 100 knots there. I'm surprised it didn't spin. That's something I need to have a go at on this thing, see if it spins. I reckon that'd be nasty. Anyway, I think we should head out and have a bit of a flight. Just see how it works off the carrier. And uh, fly a circuit, land it, and just see whether we can manage to do that in one piece. Ah, look at that. That's m fantastic, isn't it? And I still think those clouds look amazing. I can't see any reason for spending money on uh, on on a lot of the uh, weather packages out there. I just can't convince myself I need to do it. So here we are in on the deck of the aircraft carrier. Everything's ready to go now. All you need to do is set yourself up, flaps and all the rest of it, power up to full, and then just hit the brakes to get yourself to launch here. If you haven't done it, uh, just look for the special starts. You can fly. We well, can fly anything out here. I don't know if it'll launch off if you're in a Cessna. But uh, the chances are it might do. Line yourself up. So we're going to take off here. And it's basically uh, east-west it's travelling. So we'll be able to take off. I think we're taking off easterly or something. Now have a look at the compass in a second. And, uh, and then we'll fly around and come back in and, and try and put it back on the deck again. So most of the controls are not, ton and are not controllable. You can't do anything with them. The, uh, the missiles are down on the bottom left of the main panel. There we are. Off. Successful. Nose up. It's wallowing a bit. Gear up. Need to get the flaps up. Accelerate out until it's doing something comfortable. So we're just coming up towards uh, 280 knots. We try not to go too fast because we'll only have to try and slow down again. And we'll just go for about a 45 degree bank. That seems to be what uh, they tend to do on the uh, videos I've seen of doing this for real so if you maintain your turn and consistent fly down when you get parallel with the air, with the aircraft carrier again um, you can give, give yourself a count of 10 or so and then start your turn again and you generally come in behind it but I'm going to give myself a little bit of room there's a carrier over to the left so let's head down there's a bit of cloud I'm getting good frame rates as well at the moment happy with that. Get back on the power. Try not to get it too quick. And we'll get our gear and flaps and everything all out in a sec. What a large cockpit to uh, to climb into. He is ready. Sparrows and uh, the side ones. Now the side one is the heat seeking out there on the wings, and the sparrows are under the fuselage. There's a couple of there, semi-active. Not sure how you would lock someone up in in this one. I actually, haven't checked to see whether I can turn the HUD on, which is something I probably should have done. But we'll continue the turn around as we go, and we'll uh, line ourselves up. We got the gear, the hook, the flaps are down. And we'll try and load it. This is really challenging. If you haven't done it, guys, I highly recommend it. Again, just jump into this, the special starts menu uh, on the left-hand side when you're setting up the aircraft. And uh, and that's also where you can change your weapon slot. Stick some bombs on it and stuff if you want. And uh, go go bomb some things. The panel is that bottom left-hand one uh, There's where there's four switches. Just to the right of where the gear lever is. So the gear lever's just gone ILS down. 108.10. Uh, zero have a look two. there, You're overpowered. and you can actually turn those ones are switchable. And there's some ones on the right hand side You're on the right hand lower panel. Um, your radios are over there, and you can uh, You're turn your radios and tune those there. But there's not a great deal else that's clickable within this cockpit. You're but it's still a lot of fun to fly. We're lined up, you can You're just see it in the HUD there, the aircraft carrier. You can see the trail off to the left. Remember the landing strip is actually a little off centre to the main uh, aircraft carrier's path. So be, I don't know, would it be 5 You're degrees or 10 degrees off? 
you're overpowered. Trying to manage your speed here in your descent room. Maybe you try and use your pitch for your speed. Because getting the right pitch will give you the green lights there on top of the hut. I'm still going a little bit fast. I need some more practice on this. So you can just see those uh, on the hut. There's the arrows up, you're which means you're going too fast. The, the arrows that point downwards and orange, you're going too slow. And the green is you're on speed. And then once you're on speed, it's a matter of just balancing the power a little to d control your descent rate as you come into the carrier. The water textures don't look too bad out here as well. A bit greener. They're getting... Now well, look for the lights on the left. You can just see them in the corner of the HUD. They're your, the, the meatball. Looks a little bit low. But we're coming in and we're on and we've trapped. Ah, great effects, great effects. I like how it bobs and weaves once you've hit the ground. That seems fairly realistic, again, from what I've seen. So the, the cable doesn't stay with us. We, sh we should be still attached to one of the cables. But we're all done. So until next time, we'll see you back here at Let's Fly VFR. Remember to subscribe and come visit letsflyvfr.com if you need any new toys and any information. It'll all be there for you. So... Have a great Christmas and New Year and we'll catch you back in 2019.